Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. I know the title makes it sound like it's an episode of Family Feud, but really it's not. My history with my mom is messy, and our relationship could be described as non-existent. With all the issues she gave me and the years of therapy I needed because of her, made it impossible to even think that I'd reach a day where I'll be getting married. That's why, when such a day came, I completely forgot about her existence and swore not to let her botch my perfect day. So, people of this subreddit might think I'm an a-hole who's hell-bent on revenge, but read my story first before labeling me. My mom was an alcoholic who barely could hold herself, let alone hold a steady job. The day she managed to give me dinner, it was boiled noodles or sometimes a piece of toast with water. The only good thing about my childhood was the house my dad left us before dying, and thankfully, I had a roof over my head. That's why I grew up too quickly and started looking after myself. I managed to get a few jobs here and there, helping out the neighbors or babysitting kids when I was a little older. But that was barely enough to pay for food and school supplies, and even then my mom used to steal from me to buy alcohol. I grew up to despise her, and not being able to leave the only roof I had, I couldn't do anything but put up with her. I got a scholarship after high school and left home forever. And now I'm a woman with a stable career and a man who wants to marry me. Even though I didn't tell her, my mom found out about it and called me to ask why she didn't get an invitation. I could only guess the culprit who told her. Anyway, I told her I didn't want to remember my past life or the lack of a life I had at that time. I told her she's not my mom because she failed to actually look after me and do her job. I hung up after that and blocked her number, but I know my mom. So I knew nothing could stop her if she decided to crash my wedding and that led me to prepare in advance for when that happens. I asked my bridesmaids to keep an eye out for when my mother finally barges in like she's the most important guest in here. I told them to promptly take action and bring her to me. I had a whole idea in my mind on how to handle her. So rage or public scenes of kicking her out won't do anything to humiliate her as she has experienced them quite a lot in her alcoholic life and has grown used to them. The only thing that could shock her enough to keep her mouth shut are emotions or sudden acceptance. As she was never accepted by anyone or her life, it's the most alien thing to her. I decided to exploit her weakest points and save my body from turning into a public entertainment. My maid of honor was the first one to see my mom coming into the venue. She quickly intercepted her and brought her to me. I was getting ready at that time and was almost finished. As I saw my mom, I hugged her. My mom froze all over from that single hug. I knew she wouldn't expect that. I told her that even though I said on the phone that I hate her, now that I'm standing here in this big moment on my big day, I really wanted her to be there. I thanked her for coming here even though I insulted her on the phone and didn't invite her. I told her that I'm glad as a mother that she made the wise choice of coming here to support me even though I was being a crappy daughter. Now, she was more shocked than anything. I even asked her to put the veil on my head. As she was fixing the veil, I saw her face looking proud as if she really was the one who made me who I am. She was faintly smiling now and I pretty much figured her thoughts would be along the lines of how I finally managed to look at all the things she did for me as a mother. Right, like a piece of toast for dinner on alternate nights is really something to be proud of. Either way, she had no idea at that point what kind of humiliation I had planned for her. Once the wedding vows were over and I became a married woman, the after party started. Everyone started dancing and drinking and eating. Meanwhile, I was keeping an eye on my mom, silently eyeing the alcohol. When I asked her what's up with her being empty-handed, she told me she's sober now. That surprised me a little. But then I took her hand and started introducing her to all my guests. I made sure everyone knew exactly who my mom was. She even asked me why I was acting so weird, but I told her I'm finally an adult and married, and I understand that she did her best for me at this age. For a moment, I did think that she was going to tell me something, but then decided against it. I shrugged and moved on. When the time for the toast arrived, the maid of honor and the best man gave the first speech. Me and my fiancé, well, my husband now, have also prepared our special speeches. It was my idea. I let my husband go first. 
Once it was my turn, I decided to unfold the last part of my plan to utterly humiliate my so-called mom. I started talking about how I'm grateful for everything I have gotten so far in life. I talked about my childhood and specifically pointed out the struggles. I told everyone present there that I had to weed out people's gardens, take their dog for walks, go grocery shopping for some people, babysit kids only a year or two younger than me, all the while making sure to do my homework and attend classes. I had to wash the same dress every other night and dry it by morning so I could have clean clothes. When I ran out of detergent, I sneaked some from the people's houses I used to work in. I told them about the times I had to decide between buying notebooks and food because the money I scrounged up by working was stolen by my mom who had to buy alcohol. My whole toast was about the things I had to suffer through in my teen years and before that because of my mother. I ended by saying how I'm so proud my mom is here to listen to all this and how grateful I am that she's sober for once in my life so she can actually understand the words I'm speaking. I told everyone how much I love this mom who came to this wedding uninvited and is now pretending to be proud of the daughter she raised when in reality I was the one raising myself. I told them how glad I am to have her here among us and that everyone should make sure to thank her for raising a daughter like me. Listening to me, my mom was so shocked she couldn't say anything. Everyone was staring at her, but no one was kicking her out of the venue or asking her to get out. Then I kissed my husband and told him thanks for letting me do this. Then I completely ignored my mom. That's how my perfect day ended and my new life started. Now, do you really think I'm an a-hole? Wasn't this the least she deserved for making me be an adult from a very early age? Can anyone here really blame me? Oh my God, my mom, who I completely humiliated at my wedding, gave me a call last night. It's been eight months since the last time I saw her, and I didn't think I'd ever see or hear from her again. She was drunk. She drunk dialed me. She called me and told me how much she hates me. She said that I'm still a child who knows nothing about her life or the kind of person she is. She said she was a moron to think that she could have asked for forgiveness from me on my wedding day as she thought I was old enough to understand where she's coming from, but I proved her wrong. She told me that she knew every moment of our life together, how much she's damaging me, but there was nothing she could have done. Not because she didn't want to, but because this society had banished her long before I came into this world. She said that I had no idea how hard she struggled to protect me from an abusive and possessive father and drinking was the only way to numb the pain of all the nights she took a beating on my behalf. She told me that after he was gone, she tried to get sober and get a job to look after me, but nobody wants an addict without any experience or degree to work for them. So she did her best to give me anything she could. And when seeing me suffer became too much for her, she finally went back to drinking to avoid looking at her mistakes. She got sober after I left for college and tried to get by. She called me occasionally to apologize or finally tried to salvage a mother-daughter relationship but I always seemed too busy. She gave up on it, and then on my wedding, she decided to try one last time, but my attitude completely surprised her. Seeing me accepting her made her think maybe words aren't required and I understand her, so she was shocked but also thankful. But the stunt I pulled told her that I'd never be old enough to understand her, and she would never apologize to a daughter like that. She kept rambling on drunkenly, but I couldn't help but be pissed at her. How can this person blame me for her lack of spine? How can she call my one act of revenge against her worse than all her actions throughout my childhood? No matter what she said, I can't bring myself to feel sympathy or embarrassment for this person. I think I'm going to let go of her. I can't even begin to understand this woman who made a choice to be a drunk and not be responsible, and yet she's telling me it was because of me? How can I ever forgive her? Do you really think she's not an a-hole? Does she deserve my sympathy? N-A-H, I don't think you're the a-hole here, but I also don't think what your mom did in your childhood is an a-hole either. You guys need to talk to each other. I'm sure you can find a common ground. N-T-A, you're not the a-hole, and what you did doesn't even begin to compare to the amount of neglect you suffered in your childhood. If I could, I'd give your child version a hug and tell her that everything will be okay. I'm 22-year-old male, my girlfriend is 23, 
Heather, has never been to Disneyland before, despite living an hour away from Magic Kingdom. So as a way to celebrate her graduation, I bought tickets and I'm taking her in a week. My Aunt Jenny learned that Disneyland trip coincidentally falls on my cousin Melanie's eighth birthday. Aunt Jenny asked if I could take Melanie since Aunt Jenny would be busy that day and offered to pay for Melanie's ticket and cover any of her food toy expenses. Something to mention about Melanie is that Aunt Jenny suspects her of having a mental disorder. Aunt Jenny thinks autism, but Melanie just seems a bit blunt, socially inexperienced to me. Aunt Jenny does not have a diagnosis as she tried when Melanie was about two, but obviously it was inconclusive. Melanie has no concept of boundaries or being told no without throwing a tantrum. I explained to Aunt Jenny that I have an autistic friend. He can be awkward sometimes, but he's capable of understanding boundaries, and so is Melanie. But then she told me how it's not fair to compare an adult to a child, that and not all autism is the same. I realized it would go nowhere, so I just left it alone after that. I can be okay with kids, especially when their parents are there to take over, but I'm really not equipped to handle Melanie on my own or be able to calm her down if she has a tantrum or meltdown. Plus, as mean as it sounds, this trip is supposed to be about Heather, and I want her to have a peaceful day to celebrate without worrying about Melanie. I explained this very gently to Aunt Jenny, but she called me an a-hole because Melanie has been begging to go to Disneyland for her birthday and I care more about some girl than my family. Aunt Jenny started making passive-aggressive social media posts saying things like OP is taking Heather to Disneyland. Melanie wishes she could be there. And if only Melanie's birthday wish could come true and she could go to Disneyland with OP. Some family members began taking sides with Aunt Jenny, and they say I'm being a jerk to a child and you're only a kid once. That Heather is an adult and this trip wouldn't be as meaningful to her as it would be to Melanie. Am I entitled for believing that this trip should be to congratulate Jenna's graduation instead of Melanie's birthday? NTA, not your kid, not your problem. If it's so important for your cousin to go, your aunt, her own mother, should not be busy on her birthday. She's known for eight years when her child's birthday is and should have arranged to have the day open if it was so important. I am a firm believer that blood doesn't make you family. Family is who you choose. You're an adult setting out on your future and that includes making your own new family. Your girlfriend sounds lucky to have someone as thoughtful as you in her life. NTA, if your aunt cared so much for her own daughter, then she should be taking her, not you. What she's trying here is to relieve herself from her birthday for the whole day. Plus, she's making herself look bad, honestly, by blasting this on social media. She's not realizing that this is blemishing her persona as an adult and parent. Finally, no is a complete sentence. You don't need to provide an explanation of why you don't think it's a good idea to take your cousin. Don't volunteer information when not asked. You get yourself into more complicated territory and have a wonderful time. I got divorced eight years ago because I found out my husband was having an ongoing affair with a co-worker. We had a daughter named Lila together, 10 years at the time, who we got split custody. He married the co-worker and I ended up marrying my now husband, Miles, four years ago. Miles had one daughter, Emma, who is a year younger than Lila. Lila started uni this year, a few months after her father also moved cities. Since his new house was very close to her new campus, it made sense for us to save money on accommodation and her to live with him. I was disappointed and I'll admit a little jealous that he was going to be living with her while I wouldn't get to see her much, but I knew it was best for Lila, so I was all right. She moved in January and there haven't been any issues since she came back to visit us in these holidays. In the three-bedroom house, Miles and I bought together. All of the bedrooms have walk-in robes, while only two of them have en suites. Miles and I took one of those, and Lila got the other because she was older and Emma didn't mind. After Lila moved out, Emma asked if it would be all right for her and Lila to swap rooms so she could have the en suite and the extra space. Since Lila was going to be home very rarely and Emma was doing an apprenticeship in our town, therefore would be living here for years to come. I thought this was reasonable, so we did the swap. 
It was fine until Lila came back a few days ago and saw what had happened. She asked me what I'd done, and when so explained, she started accusing me of favoring Emma over her own daughter. She said I was forgetting all about her now and that I was probably glad that she had left so I could have Emma to myself. She was yelling in front of everyone and I could tell how embarrassed Emma was. She stayed in a motel that night and didn't take any of my calls. The next morning, she came back and said that she was sorry for how she acted and that she would forget all about it if we just gave her the room back. I told her there was no way she was getting the far better room just for it to sit there empty 95% of the time while Emma was living here permanently. Upon hearing that, she left again and she must have driven back to her dad's because later that evening he called me and told me that I was being an a-hole for favoring Emma. I wasn't trying to do that at all, and I didn't think what I did was an issue, but now I'm starting to doubt myself, A-I-T-A. I spoke to my daughter, and we both got a chance to explain ourselves. I apologized for not telling her and forcing her to find out herself. She admitted she only acted out because she was under a lot of pressure in school, and she was worried Emma was taking her place. She's not angry about the bedroom and we're planning on going away for the weekend to spend some much needed time together. YTA, and your reasoning doesn't make full sense. If Emma is only a year younger than Lila, won't she be going away to dorm or uni in a year too? Won't the room be vacant during the school year for her too? Seems to me you reacted from the hurt of Lila living with a man who betrayed you. Also, don't touch your children's things without permission. N-A-H, you should have at least talked to Lila about it, but at the same time, if there is no personal stuff in the room, she has no reason to be upset. All of you acted a little stupid, but no one acted like an a-hole.